Good morning. Welcome to Prosser United Methodist Church this Sunday, November 27th, 2022. I'm Bo Bryan, the pastor. Uh, we have a couple of guest um, musicians with us today playing organ and also singing. And, and so we'll have a, a lot of different things going on. Uh, welcome also to the first Sunday of Advent. And uh, as we will be doing going through Advent, we have the Advent candle uh, lighting part of the service now and different uh, banners around the sanctuary space here. Um, I do want to uh, re remind you that uh, if you have a joy or concern, please do note that on a piece of paper and um, um, pass it to me when, when it comes time for the joys and concerns, I'll ask for those. Also, I um, just want to mention to those online, if you have a joy or concern you would like us to pray for, just um, uh, email it to us at prosserumc.99350 at gmail.com and we will share that in our service. Take a look at your announcements today. Um, look at the schedule for the week today. Uh, is the first, as I mentioned, the first Sunday of Advent, and we are doing the hanging of the greens after a coffee hour today. And so if you want to stay around and, and help out with that, we'll be setting up the Christmas tree here in the sanctuary. Uh, we will be setting up uh, another tree and other decorations in the uh, narthex space. So if you want to uh, stay around for that and enjoy that with us, uh, please do so. Also on Saturday, the men's group is meeting uh, and at 8 a.m. Uh, and then next Sunday, we're having a Christmas craft uh, session with Camille Klingel. Uh, and during, is it going to be during coffee hour or after coffee hour? You know, I'll be here, so it's whenever we're Okay, we'll do it whenever. Sure. Definitely after church. Okay, not during the worship service. We'll get that clear. Yeah. Um, and so those are, uh, uh, that'll be coming up next week and, and become prepared to be crafty and, and uh, uh, adventurous. In your bulletin today, you have a special offering envelope for United Methodist Student Day. Uh, offerings that are given for this are go to uh, scholarships and to uh, loans, student loans for United Methodist students and also uh, helping uh, United Methodist student education in our seminaries. And goes to also toward a fund uh, that will help annual conferences uh, fund uh, uh, students going to, to United Methodist, students going to college and also going to United Methodist colleges and seminaries. So if you'd like to donate to that, use the envelope that's a part of that and put it in the on uh, offering plate in the back uh, after the service. Those are the announcements for today. Uh, we will have now our uh, lighting of the first Advent candle and the Marge Ray family will be doing that uh, with us this morning. If you'll turn in your bulletin to that part of the service. Good morning. My helper today is Owen Ray. Advent is a time of waiting, a time of promise, as we prepare to welcome the Messiah, God's promise of salvation for all of us. But for every new beginning, for every fulfilling promise, there is also an ending. As we prepare our homes and lives during this Advent season, following what has been an emotional, frightening, and stressful year for many, what needs to end? What should we discard as unclean, unnecessary, no longer useful to make room for God's promise? Wherever we are, together or apart, we light our first candle of Advent, recognizing God's promise to the world. Lord, we offer up We offer up our sorrows, our fears, 
our ill will towards others, our negative behaviors to make room in our communities, our lives, our homes, and our hearts for you. We are all your people. Join with me in the Advent prayer. Merciful God, always with us, always coming. We confess we do not know how to prepare for your Advent. We have forgotten how to hope in miracles. We have ignored the promise of your kingdom. We get distracted by all the busyness of the season. Forgive us, God. Grant us the simple wonder of the shepherds, the intelligent courage of the Magi, and the patient faith of Mary and Joseph, while we may journey with them to Bethlehem and find the good news of a child born for us. Now, in the quiet of our hearts, we ask you to make us ready for his coming. Amen. And the uh, gospel reading today is in the book of Matthew, chapter 24, verses 36 to 44, in the New Revised Standard Version, updated edition. But about that day and hour, no one knows, neither the angels of heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. For as the days of Noah were, so will be the coming of man. For as in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day Noah entered the ark. And then they knew nothing until the flood came and swept them all away. So too will be the coming of the Son of Man. Then two will be in the field, one will be taken and one will be left. Two women will be grinding meal together. One will be taken, one will be left. Keep awake, therefore. For you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. But understand this, if the owner of the house had known in what part of the night the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and would not have left his house to be broken into. Therefore, you also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. And in the Hebrew reading, Isaiah chapter 2 verses 1 through 5 the word that Isaiah son of Amos saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem in the days to come the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established as the highest of the mountains and shall be raised above the hills all nations shall stream to it many peoples shall come and say come let us go to the mountain of the Lord to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways, and that we may walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth instruction and the word of the Lord of Jerusalem. He shall judge between the nations and shall arbitrate for many peoples. They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. O oh, house of Jacob, come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. Will you join me for a moment of prayer? May the words of my mouth and the meditations upon each of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. One of the delightful times in my life was when I uh, took a leave of absence to be an at-home parent with Ian from the time he was about two years old until he was about six. And um, it was a wonderful time for me to be uh, at home with him. One of the things that I really enjoyed doing uh, was reading books to him. And uh, we would do that at nap time, we would do that during the day, we would do that for bedtime, all, all different times. And one of the books he had was a book that was entitled A Promise is a Promise. I don't know if you've ever heard of that book. Uh, it's a neat uh, story about uh, uh, an indigenous little girl 
in the far north who promises her mother she's not going to go fishing on the ice flows and, and does so anyway uh, and breaks her promise. And it talks about other kinds of promises in the, in the story as well. Uh, neat, a neat story. Um, but a promise is a promise. And for God, that's in the Bible as well. A promise is a promise. Um, and we honor the promises. In fact, the story really of God and the people of God is all about promises being made, promises not being kept, mainly by the people, of course, and pro new promises having to be made, new relationship uh, having to uh, be put back together again. Isaiah is speaking in a time when, uh, when the leadership of Jerusalem the Israel, and the Israelites uh, has been far away from their promise, uh, their keeping of the promise, for quite a long time. If you read through the book of uh, Second Kings, First and Second Kings, you see a lot of comparisons of it's, it goes through all the kings, both of the northern and southern kingdoms, and they always compare back to David. David is sort of like the standard, and it was it's usually so and so was not as good a king as David was, uh, because that particular king did this uh, and was was. Uh, you know, basically, in, in essence, breaking the promise of the relationship that had been, been created between Israel and God. And so Isaiah is speaking to these leaders and to the people as well, saying there will come a time, there will come a time when a new promise will be made, when the promise will be kept, when, uh, when the old way, uh, the old uh, uh, promise, the old relationship uh, will be restored in a new way and uh, talks about someone coming, God coming to, uh, to make that restoration and God does, God keeps that promise in Jesus by coming into our world and restoring the right relationship between the people of God, now all of the people of the world and God because God is trying to set up a way in which we can keep that promise. God also has made other promises, both in um, uh, the Isaiah passage and in the Matthew passage there. Uh, God talks about a time when, plow, uh, when swords will be, will be made into plowshares and, and there will be no more war. That's a time in the future. Sometime we will get to a place uh, with God uh, that, that, ex that that happens and we're not there yet we're st we still have the, the swords uh, in our world Jesus is also talking about something that's a promise from God and that is that God will someday come to us Jesus will return to us and there will be a day of the Lord uh, that will come uh, along and that's spoken of in the Old Testament as well a day, um, and, and one of the things Jesus says in this passage from Matthew is that uh, uh, people should not really worry about when that's going to happen. I know a lot of us are curious about that, uh, and, and, and ideas come up, and uh, people claim they've got, the, the, got it all figured out according to the symbolism of the Bible, and then it doesn't come to pass, and it's been happening for the last 2,000 years pretty much. Um, but we are to be expectant of that time. Not try to figure out when it's going to happen, but be expectant that it will happen. Trust in God's promise that it will happen one day. It may not happen in our lifetime. A lot of time has already gone by. But it will one day happen. And Jesus says, you know, we're not going to know uh, when that's going to happen. If we knew, if the, he gives the example of if, if, if a person who own, uh, owner of a house uh, knew when it was going to be robbed, he would take measures to not get it robbed at that time. But we don't know that ahead of time. And so what we have to do is we have to keep our side of the promise, our end of the bargain. We have to keep the promise that we have made 
the relationship we have made with God. God seeks to be in relationship with us all the time. And God promises to be in relationship, available to us all the time. That doesn't mean that our life is going to be great because we are in relationship with God, because God is with us at all times. Things are still going to happen in our lives that, that aren't really good things for us to experience. I mean, they're not, they're not the things we would choose to experience. I loved reading books to my son. Uh, and uh, that, was, that's, that was a great part of my life. Um, Allison's death was not. <laughs> and I'm sure you all know that that's uh, from your own experiences that those kinds of things come along in our lives and we just need to trust that God is still there with us. We need to know that God did not promise us, promise us an uneventful life, a life with nothing bad happening in it, but that God does promise us that God will be there for us during those times. In this first week of Advent, we remember that a promise is a promise. That God has promised to be with us. That God fulfilled that promise by coming and living with us in Jesus. And establishing a new relationship with all people. One that does not end. One that is as alive today as it was when Jesus was alive. That promise is being kept. Let's do our part to keep our end of that promise alive. That was a promise I made, right? To get you this microphone. There you go. To have my grandchildren here this morning with me, and just a little bit about them. Uh, you've heard Tessa before. Tessa is 17. Uh, Serena is 11. They both study at Brett Music Studio in Spokane. They also, t Serena takes viola, Tessa takes violin and organ. And this year, uh, Tessa, the one at the piano here, um, started teaching. She's teaching students in Sandpoint at a music studio, Suzuki uh, Piano Studio there. So she takes lessons and she teaches. This morning, I've asked Serena to sing with me a duet. And so we're going to sing for you this morning, Jesus, the Light of the World. See the bright and morning star, Jesus, the light of the world. He is risen in our hearts, Jesus, the light of the world. Shine. 
shine all around us by day and by night. Jesus, the light of the world. No more darkness, no more night. Jesus, the light of I invite you to stand and turn in the back of the red hymnal to number 880. One of the other changes we are doing as we start another season in our church. And we will be re uh, re reciting together the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God. Father, the Almighty. Let's join together in prayer. Eternal God, we come before you as your people in prayer, and we share with you the joys and the concerns that are upon our hearts in this moment of silence.
Gracious God, we give you thanks for the world in which we live, the world which you have created, for the life that we have, the life that you have given us. We give you thanks for seasons of planting and seasons of harvest. We give you thanks for times of work and for times of rest. We give you thanks for the many people who are parts of our lives, those whom we love and care for, and who love and care for us. We give you thanks for the different seasons within the church and for this season of Advent, starting over again a cycle of remembering you, remembering you coming to us, sharing with us this life, making, with the, making a new covenant with us. through the life of Jesus and through his death and resurrection. But we pray for the people of this earth, for those who do not have enough food to eat, clean water to drink, or shelter from the cold and the wet. We pray for those experiencing war. For those who are struggling to rebuild lives after disasters of floods and hurricanes, fires and volcanoes. We pray for people who struggle in life. We do not have the love of family or friends to sustain them in their time of need. We pray for those who experience life differently than we do. Lord, help us to understand the difference. Help us to reach out to help. Help us to let them be the people you have created them to be. Lord, we pray for the, our leaders, those in our cities, towns, states, countries. Guide them, help them to make wise decisions for the people they serve. Lord, we pray for your church. Help all of us to be faithful to the promise we make to you and to know that you are always faithful to the promise you make to us. We pray this in the name of Jesus the Christ who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name.
Now go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast to what is good. Repay no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor all people. Love and serve our God in all that you do. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs>